Hmm. We're live. Oh, we're live. Hello. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, Do you want to introduce or say hello? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Laura Shacham, the producer of The Penalty, and we also have Will Frankham, the director, uh, on the line. <laughs> or in the room. I should say. Um, uh, yeah, it's really it's really great to be here. Um, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so we are um, the same team who made One for Ten, which was a yeah. web series in 2013, um, following ten different death row exonerees who, well, they had spent time on death row, then been exonerated and released. Um, and the penalty is a feature documentary that was made um, kind of as a result of that project and what we learned um, in spending some time with those death row exonerees. Um, so we were really excited to partner with the National Coalition Against the Death Penalty for that previous project, One for Ten, um, and to continue to kind of work alongside them um, through the release of the penalty. Um, Will, I don't know if you want to say anything more about who we are and what we're doing here. Uh, uh, um, hello everyone and webinar. Um, we are, as Laura said, we uh, got involved in the series called One for Ten. Um, through making the penalty, we are sort of hopefully the narrative story to tell what we think is a story. Perspective of the death penalty in, in America, sort of stories that maybe haven't been highlighted in the uh, fashion sorry. before. Um, so we are gonna get to play you um, some of that um, now, which I think that you, you know you will get to see. Uh, I think how long is the clip, Laura? I think it's about nine it's, minutes. Mm -hmm. we get to play, uh, we're gonna, uh, yeah, a nine-minute clip that that will show you. Um, some of the film, um, an exclusive, and uh, then we'll be able to come back it further. Um, you know what the film is about, what are what the things we were trying to do. Also, uh, work with you all to show it to a wider audience um, going forward in the future, um, and, and some of the aims that we we hope to achieve with it. Uh, hit play or do, can I hit play or do uh, I'll do it, shall I? Yeah. Okay. So um, here is a clip from the penalty. <laughs> Nobody knows unless you've been through it yourself. Trust me, a death penalty case is a lot different than just a regular murder case. I've I'm I've learned that. I mean, it's year after year after year going through different appeals. Why put a family through the suffering of having to have to relive that for the next 20 years? I'm 50 years old. 20 years from now, I'll be 70. I might not even be alive. I might not even be alive to see justice served for my daughter. Farrah says while she appreciates the state's hard work in going for the worst possible punishment, she just wants everything to be over. After a court hearing in February, the prosecutor and the defense attorney walked up to us and said that James Rhodes was wanting to put an offer on the table to where he would change a plea of not guilty to guilty for life in prison, no eligibility of parole. They flat out told us we would have one more court hearing. It would be done over with when we walked out. That's it. If they take his offer that he put on the table, we won't have to go through all the appeals. He would spend the rest of his life in prison without parole. 
I mean, I want justice served. He committed the crime. He committed the murder. He needs to suffer the consequences, but I don't feel like killing him is, that's not going to bring my daughter back. I just want them to take the offer so we can try to move on with our life. I need to know from you all, do you want them to take his offer? Because this is a family thing. I want him to die. I don't think you should get a death penalty because there's no sense in killing somebody else. Uh, I don't even want to talk about this. No, but I need to know in case the judge, because it's a family thing. I don't. Mom, at the end of the day, nothing's going to matter what we say anyway. What, do you want them to take his offer or do you want it to go to trial? I don't care. So now you don't care. Okay. So whatever happens, it happens, right? Yep. Okie dokie. I'll be in my car. I love you. I love you. Love you too. A condemned Preble County killer has just hours left to live. The execution is making national headlines. McGuire will be put to death by a combination of drugs never before used in the U.S. for this purpose. Well, this new drug combination was originally designed as a backup for pentobarbital, uh, which Ohio has used until now. Now, Dr. Howard Nierman at University College. Dr. Convicted killer Dennis McGuire spent the final moments of his life gasping for breath as the state of Ohio, for the first time, used an untried two-drug method of lethal injection. He reportedly gasped and snorted during the 26 minutes it took the drugs to kill him. It was the longest execution by lethal injection in U.S. history. Longtime witnesses to executions were stunned. He gasped deeply. It was kind of a rattling, guttural sound. There was a, a kind of a snorting through his nose. A couple times, he definitely appeared to be choking. At this point, it is entirely premature to consider this execution protocol to be anything other than a failed, agonizing experiment by the state of Ohio. The people of the state of Ohio should be appalled at what was done here today in their names. not unbelievable because it's exactly what we told them. I don't know what this means going forward. Maybe the governor is rightly appalled at what just happened and decides that he's going to start reprieving or commuting sentences or, you know, I don't know. 
The only failure is you, as a lawyer, weren't by his aside, attached to him for supporting a lying, murdering cunt. So you should perish the same way. Typical lawyer scum. Hello, this is Alan. How can I help you? Hi, it's Tracy from NBC News. Hello, this is Alan. Hi, Alan. This is Mark Kovac from Six Newspapers and the Youngstown Indicator. I'm a producer with the Fox News Channel. Just wanted to get your general reaction. The results are in, and the experiment was a fail. I think we're talking about exactly what we argued. Dennis McGuire was going to suffocate to death, and that that was going to be terrifying and horrifying for him to experience. Present today is Amber McGuire, the daughter, and Dennis, his son. They are now, in a sense, victims as well. The agony and terror of watching my dad suffocate to death lasted more than 19 minutes. I know what cruel and unusual punishment is. I witness it. Carol Avery, Joy's sister, says she knows her sister suffered terror and pain when she was raped, sodomized, choked, and killed by Dennis McGuire. She says he was treated more humanely today than her sister was treated, and it was time for him to face his judgment. Would you expect the state might put a hold on using this method? I would hope. In our press release, we did call on Governor Kasich to basically implement a moratorium on executions. There are going to be people that are going to say, someone being put to death, it shouldn't be painless type of thing. He spent 24 years in prison, and he paid his time. And he shouldn't have to go that way. He shouldn't have be tortured to death. Ohioans need to understand that the death penalty is carried out in the name of every single citizen of the state of Ohio. We are all culpable. You have seven new messages. The people of the state of Ohio should be appalled by what was done in their name. It's just actually appalling that you even say something remotely to those remarks. You've kind of lost your mind. Okay. Hello? <laughs> so is I I, don't, I hope everyone can hear me better now. Maybe someone can let me know if you guys can all hear me properly now. Um I just want to mention can you hear am I freezing before um we move on with anything else that you know that that bit of the film that you're seeing is sort of um uh, you know, is, is the sort of two, the middle of the film where sort of two things, two of our main character stories are really sort of turning. Um, Dublin and her family are trying to decide whether or not they want the death penalty. Um, as you can see in that, in that clip, you know, we really wanted to show that it's a uh, you know, sort of decision that's going on with the family. And obviously the uh, question of Dennis Biggs, you know, turning point in, lethal injection uh, stuff going on in Ohio. Um, what you haven't seen there is the third, our third character, who is Damon Thibodeau. Um, we unfortunately didn't have enough time to show you more of the film, which would feature Damon, but um, Damon was on death row in uh, Louisiana. Um, and we follow him in sort of the first, you know, as he sort of attempts to put his life back together um, after such a long time. Um, on death row and in solitary confinement, whether, you know, through meeting a girlfriend and getting a job, um, and the sort of trials and tribulations that someone who has been incarcerated for so long goes through. Um, and also, and also finding himself as a, a sort of a political activist, uh, to some degree and trying to sort of find his voice in, um, you know, doing death penalty work as well as someone who has sort of been through it. So that's the third story that gives you a sort of little, you know, a snapshot of a sense of what the penalty is. Um, you know, hopefully you'll be able to see the full thing. Uh, <laughs> um, um, maybe, Will, you could just quickly um, let people know what the sort of rationale was behind having those three stories, you know, why we sort of wanted to link those three experiences of death penalty together. Well, uh, I mean, I think uh, for all of us, you know, when we came off the back of Room 1 for 10, we very much looked at it in innocence. Um, uh, the, you know, we, we knew that we had sort of 
heard of so many more in, interesting um, stories around uh, the death penalty than just stories of people who were innocent on death row. As much as that was a compelling story, we knew that there was much more going on. Um, and we wanted to try and tell these sort of different stories of death penalty. We'd all seen great films about, um, you know, you know, people who've been sitting on death row and, and stories of wrongful convictions and all that sort of stuff. But we knew that there was, you know, we wanted to see what it would be like for, what is it like for lawyers? And it wasn't, you know, it took us a while to settle on the story. Very much went off and filmed um, many different stories. Really sort of emerged. We wanted to follow and where things really happen, and um, are very compelling. And I actually very impressed. Um, I like to think of the three stories as people as real fighters, and I think. Um, and I hope that uh, it gives us. A penalty than maybe we've had. What do you? What was your? What was your motivations, Laura? Um, I think. Well, I think similar to yours, very similar. Um, I I think that having had the experience of making one for ten, it seemed that there were so many um, nuances, really, to individual experience of the death penalty, and that. Um, the way that capital punishment um, sort of penetrates the fabric of society is much more far-reaching than we might imagine. So, um, of course, it's about people who are sitting on death row. Of course, it's about their families. Um, and it's about the victims and the victims' families. But it also goes so much further beyond that. All the people who come into contact with those people have their own trauma that they absorb and that they live um, and that also affects their families. So to me, it was really about a way of showing um, or allowing people a sort of glimpse into what it means um, to have kind of experience capital punishment, but that that can take many different forms, I think. Um, can you, um, I mean, what, what was it like for you when... Uh, you know, I mean, tell the audience a little bit of lethal injection story. Um, I mean, I know that I had to shoot off with very, very time left to go meet Alan Wickham. Oh, I've lost you. I missed Are the you, end of your question. Sorry. I was saying maybe you can just tell people a little bit about how we came upon the lethal injection uh, story. Sure. Um, so we were looking for ways to um, share the different experiences of the death penalty with people. And one of those experiences we were really keen to share was that of a um, defense attorney. So somebody who spends kind of day in, day out um, working with people on death row, but also in a um, capital habeas unit, particularly because that's where there's sort of um, it comes to real deadline and um, they're sort of they're they're working to really save somebody's life at that point. So um, we, I mean, we'd spent many many months <laughs> researching, um, kind of just constant reading every single Google alert that you could possibly find about the death penalty. But um, we came across uh, Alan and the work that he was doing, and it was literally the ne very next day. Um, I think after we decided to kind of send Will out there. Um, that Maguire's execution was set for. Um, so it was a real, this is a very, um, a prime moment really to be able to kind of capture what happens in that moment and what the lawyers go through really um, at that really um, urgent time. Um, so so yeah, so we kind of sent Will out there um, not knowing exactly what he'd find. And we were just extremely lucky to find Alan Bonnet, who was very open to the process and very willing to share what he was going through. Um, and his entire office really were extremely generous with their, with their time. So hopefully you get a sense of the sort of pressure that, um, that is building at that moment. Cool. Yeah. Um, 
Um, um, when you I'm mentioned the good news. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, so that's then how we know Darlene. Um, you know, uh, uh, basically, so, sorry, <laughs> mad honking horns outside. Um, so Darlene's uh, family is the one you saw in the clip who uh, have to say, well, they don't want the death penalty in the case of their daughter's murder. And I think one of the things we really wanted to show with this case, this film, and is kind of unique in other places, but one sort of view, you know element of the death penalty that we really wanted to highlight was its impact on. And uh, what we really, what was interesting about Darlene is that you know they they had a very similar reaction. People when they they were pro death penalty that they wanted to see this murderer executed, um, but as they go through the process of. Um, Try to really understand. I think come to visually understand um, that you know it's often one that does and that dress uh, is one that's definitely not in their favour, and also one that could last for years. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, so we really wanted to show that you know we, we really feel that you know you know rehabilitation or not necessarily level of understanding and forgiveness um, and mediation is really really important um, and in the spoilers you know that that, that it plays a big part in this story really um, mm -hmm. um and just um we what we're keen uh, also i mean no you speak no, I was just going to say that we're really keen to leave um, enough time for people to ask questions, but maybe just um, as a sort of final point to explore, um, I wonder, I mean, I know that for me, the way that politics plays into the landscape of um, the death penalty throughout the US um, in, in many different ways um, was fascinating and something that we were really, really keen to kind of um, reveal. I think it's a it's really misunderstood, definitely by international audiences, but perhaps even within the US itself. Um, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about how we tried to show the effect that had on Darlene and her family and, and their story. Well, interestingly, we, we tried to film a few different political stories in this case, in this film. You know, we followed the repeal efforts in Nebraska and New Hampshire and Delaware filming. Um, and then actually what was quite interesting was the biggest political story we found was a local one. And I think that that's quite a way to view politics playing out in regards to the death penalty in the U.S., which is that, you know, Florida still has the death penalty. Um, but, you know, as I think we've seen across the country now is that, you know, it's in very few, it's in a lot of and certain prosecutors, if they miss film, specifically Angela Corey losing her job to Melissa Nelson, um, the role those local you know, political decisions can have to scale. You know, Alan says to us in the film that, you know, if a handful of prosecutors Country. And I think that that is not too far from the truth. So um, I think that that was a really interesting thing that we, we weren't really actually looking for, but we stumbled across. Um, and we got quite lucky at highlighting how that plays out um, and in quite traumatic fashion in this film. Um, can we, should we ask some, should we see if there are any questions? Yeah. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, if you want to type them into the Chat box. <laughs> Tell me what this is well. going. Yeah. So just in general, um, you know, we are just to let people know as they're writing questions, we are, are if they're writing questions, <laughs> we are you know to audiences as much as possible this year. We have done um, some state tours recently of Ohio um, and Louisiana. It's been shown in Alaska. We just had the screening in Florida last week. Um, so uh, we are looking to do that as much as possible um, and we are working with partner organizations. So uh, if you 
are interested in doing in, in sort of helping us to, to screen the film or if you're interested in screening the film um, like that you can get in touch with uh, national campaign against death penalty but also get in touch with us um, you know you go to the penalty um, where you will be able to find our email addresses our Facebook and our Twitter and our and uh, you know everything you need in touch with us. Um, so let me see here. Um, there, will there be a screening? Anything doing screenings in? I think we'd spoken to someone there. We basically will do screenings in, in as many places as possible if we think we can get an audience, and we can work with some local people and find a cinema, basically, um, or university, or church, or whatever. Really, I mean, I think that. For us, we will try and show it to the school. Yeah, and I think I think just to add to that, so so far the screenings that we've been doing have been kind of very strategically placed around either a piece of legislation um, or a particular uh, execution. So in Ohio, that was the run up to an execution and strategically designed to kind of put pressure um, and perhaps reprieve that execution, which it did, in fact. Um, well, it was a contributing factor, <laughs> shall we say. Um, so, um, so we are really keen to um, show the film sort of as widely as possible, but if you recognize or can identify a particular moment or need in your local area, like we, we would love that opportunity to marry a screening of the film with some action that people can take. Um, I can see Jacqueline's just asking, what, what can we do? Um, so you can get in contact with us, write to us, tell us about where you think people need to see this film. You know, if you have ideas on speakers or um, we're really, really keen to foster debate. So even if you think there is somebody who, um, you know, is perhaps pro death penalty or supports the death penalty in certain elements, like we would love to bring them into a conversation because we think it's really important that um, we manage to kind of challenge those views in an open platform rather than um, people sort of hiding them away and never having a chance to change them. Um, so get in touch with us, follow us uh, on Facebook and Twitter, um, get in touch with uh, NCADP, um, find out how you can get involved with their actions. Um, essentially, I think the more people who can see the film, the more opportunity we have to discuss the death penalty and move towards change. Um, Will might have further thoughts. <laughs> I would just say absolutely that you know, I mean, we made this film to be seen as much as possible. Um, we feel so far from the screenings that we've been doing that people feel that it is a film that is sort of fair and from a place that is not so I've heard people have said it's not I think it's way to say that it welcomes in people from both sides uh, you know it definitely does have a message but it is uh, one that starts off from a place that I think either pro or death penalty people from anti death penalty people can come to um, uh, so just saying thank you Nathan for posting our one for ten uh, links uh, please do go watch those if you as well are available on Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. So if you like, you like to screen those films or promote them or use them educationally or anything, please do get in touch with us, but you don't use them. Um, but we just say get in touch as we'd like to know about it. Um, and we have some, you know, we do have some sort of other materials that we can help provide to uh, build lesson plans and stuff around that stuff as well. Um, so I mean, basically we've got to get uh, moving but mm -hmm. I mean I, I, I just want to say really thank you all for taking time out of your day to, uh, to, to, to hear from us and to, to watch a little um, I'm just sorry, I just saw a video chance to do an opening. I don't know about that James. Uh, we, I don't know if um, but do get in touch with us if you need anything. Uh, Don, thanks for your email. Your email address, we will get in touch. And please do join who would like, or um, or just to talk about what we're doing in the future. You guys are all very interested in this issue, and we want to be, you know, 
him the call. So um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thanks everyone. Um, and hopefully we can all be in touch soon. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Thanks to MCADP. Bye.